Good day to you. Today we're going to be looking at neural filters and color eyes. Now I'm going to go through a series of old vintage photographs and then at the end of this video I'm going to take this image here that you can see on screen and I'm going to colorize this also but I'm going to then go through methods for cleaning it up and making up for the areas that Photoshop kind of stuffed up on. So do stick around to the very end and I'll show you the best methods for that. In the meantime, Let's get into this. Right, who we got here? Basil Rathbone and Nigel Bruce. Sherlock Holmes and Dr. Watson. Okay, so we're going to go to filter, we're going to go to neural filters, and we're going to colorize this photograph. What, what, Holmes? Right, now that I'm there, I'm going to click on colorize. Give it a few seconds and... Bam! We're done. Now, just before I move away from this screen, I'm just going to show you what's going on here. We've got ways of tweaking the scene. So, for instance, so if you want it to become a little redder, you can do by dragging this over here, or towards the cyan, or, of course, towards the yellow, or the blue, or the green, or the magenta. We've also got saturation. So, if I want to increase the saturation for this image, I can do so there. Do experiment all of these settings at your leisure. I'm going to click on OK and we're going to have a quick look at this image. Do you know, I think that's pretty amazing. I could have spent half an hour on getting the colour like that if I was doing this manually. This just took, what, 20 seconds, 30 seconds? Absolutely stunning. I think that is an excellent result. We have an image which is quite grainy, a little bit mushy around the edges. There's not a lot of definition in there, but the AI behind uh, neural filters, colorize has done a stunning job. It does look a little bit sepia, a little bit yellow in places, but I think that is pretty incredible. Let's move on to Boris. Don't let me down on Boris. Come on, you've got to, you've got to make Boris look good. Here we go. Whoa! Look at that. That is quite amazing. Boris, back from the brink. Look at him. Look at the detail. That is stunning. Absolutely love it. There's a bit of discoloration on the uh, suit there, but that's not a problem. If I wanted to refine this, I could always go to the adjustment layers and click on hue and saturation, bring down the saturation a little bit like that, invert my mask, go to my brush tool with white as my painting color. I could just sort of paint out some of that back to gray. Oh, that is amazing. Charlie Chaplin. Let's see what we can do with Charlie. <sighs> yeah, okay, didn't quite work that well, Charlie. It looks all right. It's not bad, but um, yeah, there are some weird things going on there. I don't think the faces look particularly that good. Kind of looks like someone's done it by hand with a paintbrush. Not sure. Okay, didn't quite work well with Charlie. Yule Brenner. Can't go wrong with a bit of Yule Brenner. Let's have a look now. Filter. Neural filters. I want to see what colour his head comes out at. Is the AI going to pick up on skin? It did. Wowzers. Okay, I'm going to boost the saturation for this one. Let's just give it a bit more. Technicolor. That is amazing. Hasn't touched his clothes though. Interesting. His head? Yes. Clothes? No. Not bad though. Look at the background. It's like a bluey grey. Not bad at all. Okay. James Stewart, it's a wonderful filter. Let's have a look now. Color eyes. Let's see James Stewart in Technicolor. Wow, look at that. Okay, his eyes have kind of gone a little pink, but again, something I can sort out with an adjustment layer with hue and saturation maybe. But that is pretty amazing. Bit of pink on his shirt there, but yeah. Look at his hair. Absolutely incredible. Blue, yeah, perfect. Skin colors, perfect. A bit of lipstick, but hey. Let's go with that. John Wayne and Marsha Hunt. Okay. I think John Wayne would wear colours like that, wouldn't he? Uh, skin looks okay. Everything else. The, the background actually looks better than they do. So, yeah, maybe. Uh, not quite convinced with this one. Judy Garland. Okay, filter. Not bad at all. Look at that. Bit of pink in her teeth there, but hey. How it managed to do those checkers are oh, just incredible. Mash. Do you remember MASH? Is she going to have hot lips or washed out lips? Okay, there we go. 
kind of looks like a five pound on the internet kind of deal, doesn't it? Yeah, not sure about that one. Okay, moving swiftly on, Elizabeth Taylor. Neurofilters, let's see what we can do with Lizzie here. Ooh, not bad at all. Game's picked up on her own black hair. I know the tone's there anyway, but it hasn't thrown loads of brown in there. That is just stunning. Bit of bleed over here where the orchid is. I know my plants. Uh, but face, look at her eyes, absolutely amazing. Love it. Lips, really bright red. Very, very good. Carrie Grant, Ralph Bellamy and Rosalind Russell. Okay, the faces look good. The faces look really good. It's picking up on Carrie's amazing tan and the lipstick going on over here. And what is going on there? Don't think Carrie Grant would wear a red and blue suit. I just I can't see it. Not bad though. Hair, skin looks amazing. Laurel and Hardy. My favourites. I love these guys. Oh no. That's like an accident in a laundrette, isn't it? Uh, no, 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 no. No, that's not doing justice to the lads. No. No red moustache. No. Audrey Hepburn. Okay, now Audrey. Audrey, why did you leave me, Audrey? I suffer from Hepburn. Turns out to be a hiatus hernia. Ah! Wow. Look at that. That is incredible. Her eyes! Absolutely amazing. Her hair. Everything perfect. Yeah, the rattan has kind of gone a bit south, but apart from that, that is amazing. It's even picked up on a little bit of eyeshadow there. How does it do it? Absolutely amazing. That is stunning. Okay, as promised, I'm going to go back to my first image. I'm going to apply the colorize filter to this image, and then I'm going to show you ways of rectifying any issues. I've already tried it with this image, so I know exactly what I'm going to get. But here goes. Filter. Neural filters and colorize seen it before so fake surprise there we go amazing isn't it absolutely amazing but if you look a little closer at the image smudge the lipstick there a little bit i've been drinking have you love and look at the hands you know it's like something from the walking dead this ain't right so i'm going to rectify those issues with the colorized process so there are lots of ways of doing this. I could go through the adjustment layers, bring in color balance and hue and saturation and all sorts of other methods. But for this, I'm going to use a really simple, simple method. And I know that the purists are going to hate me for this, but I'm going to do it all the same. Under brush, there is the color replacement tool. It's one tool which most purists absolutely loathe. I don't tend to use it very often apart from when I'm doing this kind of work. Using that tool, I am moving in here to the area which I need to affect, her fingers here, and I'm going to use the Alt key to sample this color here, and then I'm going to paint this color over to the affected areas. Not quite the tone I was after. How about the lovely color on her chin? Just the tone I'm after. Perfect. I think I might just continue on with this until it starts to look a bit ropey. And then again, Alt, Sample, choose another color. And the best way of dealing with this tool is just to dab. Don't just sit there painting like that. You know, just dab, Alt, dab, Alt, dab. Keep on sampling until you've got the right hues in there. Look out for areas where the color bleeds. That's one thing I've noticed with the Neuro filter. The colorized filter does tend to cause a lot of bleeding around the edges of objects, as you can see around here. So if I just paint, from the blue here. Right, I think I'll choose the colour of her lips here, just sort out a lippy. Okay, so moving over to her nails. Now that I've done that, I'll zoom out a little. I'll sort this hair out. This doesn't look right at all. Okay, I think I'm done. Let's have a look at the before and the after. So that's what we were dealing with before. 
And two. Kaplonk. Not bad at all. That's taken me, I know I've speeded things up, but it's taken me about five minutes to achieve this result from a black and white photograph. Now, I have to admit, the original photograph was colour. I took it from Pixabay. But I converted it to black and white before I started, and I applied the neural filters, colourize, onto this image. And then using the colour replacement tool, I just went away and dabbed to any issue areas. So, what can we conclude from this video? I would say that the neural filter colorize is certainly good for close-up portrait shots. Not so good on shots where there are multiple people. Not so good on shots where perhaps you see the full body. A bit rubbish on clothes, really. <laughs> but excellent on faces. I hope you've liked today's tutorial. If you haven't, then it's up to you, innit? If you have, please do hit the like button. Please do subscribe. Hit the notification bell if you've already subscribed. And please do share this video. And best of all, comment. I want to see what methods you use. Which do you prefer? Perhaps the colour replacement tool is one step too far and you want to bring in another method? Then be my guest in the comments. I will see you on the next one.